Hey guys, it's Sean Sundell. I'm gonna welcome all of you back to my channel. Those of you who are first time subscribers, maybe this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I really appreciate you guys. Totally appreciate you guys. If you have been subscribed to this channel for a while, welcome back. I couldn't do this without you guys. So today's video, we're gonna be discussing a safe way or the safest way how to approach a suspicious vehicle. Maybe this vehicle is parked in a parking lot, maybe in a roadway. This video is especially meant or designed for those of you who are in the private security sector. If you find this video helpful, maybe you think that this video or the content of this video can possibly save somebody's life, please forward this video to somebody that you care about. All right, well, let's get started. Something I want you to keep in mind is the safest way how to approach a suspicious vehicle is don't approach it at all. If you are obligated to approach this vehicle, maybe this is part of your company policy, then that's something different. But this video assumes that you are obligated by company policy to approach suspicious vehicles. So one of the first rules is, if you think a vehicle is suspicious, you probably wanna just contact the police. Call them and tell them why you think this vehicle is suspicious. Just don't call in, hey, this is a suspicious vehicle, tell them why. Hey, this vehicle has been parked here for 20 minutes. There are no other vehicles parked here. There is some type of movement in the vehicle. We've had past burglaries, thefts in the area, actually on our prim premises. And we think that this person might be scoping out the area to do a possible burglary when we leave or when we leave the area or the property for the whole night. Give the dispatcher as much information as you can. If you have a license plate, go ahead and do that or give that plate to the, the, dis the police dispatcher. If you see three occupants in the vehicle, two, five, give that number to dispatch, to the police dispatcher. You also want to tell the dispatcher what company you work for, your full name. Well, you can give first name if you want to. Callback number, okay? And give them updates. So if the vehicle is leaving the property, just give them an update on that. They might not be arriving right away, but if they arrive 20 minutes later, it'd be nice to know that the vehicle already left the area, okay? Those are my disclaimers, contact the police. Now, if you're obligated to contact the subjects that are in this vehicle or investigate this suspicious vehicle, this video is gonna help you. So once again, you're, if you're obligated only and you have no backup, we're gonna discuss how to safely, well, the safest way how to approach this vehicle. Okay, so let's discuss the approach. Now, if you ever went to any type of law enforcement academy, most of the time they teach you to approach from the rear. That way you have the element of surprise, the bad person in the car or bad people in the car, they have to actually turn around to see what's going on and they are at a disadvantage. This video, I'm gonna tell you that sometimes it's okay to approach from the front. Right here, we have a garage in the back. We have some areas of the unknown, which is the side of the yard. Um, another area over here to the left but it wouldn't make sense for me to approach from the front and then go to the rear and then come back to the front we're already here okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is illuminate the vehicle okay when you do that do not stand in front of the car okay there are some private security professionals in the past who have st stood in front of the car and they're armed and the vehicle um, try to run them over or the vehicle bolted forward. Now, what do they do in response? Well, they fired shots, okay? They fired shots and ended up in shooting and now they have to explain why they didn't move out of the way. I mean, it, it, can, it can be done. You can explain why you shot a vehicle that's moving towards you. That's, that's fine, but you just need, you're just gonna need a little bit more explanation okay so the first thing is illuminate the vehicle okay what do I see now if I see people in there I want to see what they're doing with their hands nobody's gonna kill you with their face or their feet okay 
in a shooting situation. It's most likely going to be with the hands. Obviously, if they press the gas, they can kill you. They can kill you with the vehicle. I mean, this is a ten thousand pound missile in reality. But look at their hands. Okay, see what they're doing with their hands. Are both hands visible? If you only have one hand visible, what's the other hand doing? Okay, let's watch a brief video that illustrates the importance of looking for hands. I look around to make sure. All right, wait right there, don't move, okay? Roll it down. Roll down the window. Roll down the window. Shots fired, shots fired. In the video that you just saw, in my opinion, the deputy did an awesome job. She survived this shootout. Suspect didn't even have a chance. He didn't even know what was coming to him. She did an awesome job. She survived. Okay. So let's let's give this deputy thumbs up on that. Great job, deputy. This is how fast things can unfold. You lose sight of their hands for one minute. The next minute, you're going to have somebody shooting at you, which is not a good thing. Okay. I also want to. I want you to keep in mind that I would not approach a vehicle in the darkness that looks suspicious without a firearm. Taser's not gonna work. It has to be a firearm, okay? So the first thing, like I said, is watch the hands. We're gonna discuss the approach. We're gonna refer to certain points of the vehicle as pillars, okay? Pillars or posts, but I like to refer to them as pillars. So this area that's right here, again, depending, well, depending on where you're trained, they will usually refer to this area as the A pillar. This area right here, okay, illuminate that. B pillar, and then here, C pillar, okay? The name doesn't really matter. What matters most is that you know that there, there's different points of a vehicle. So when you're at the A pillar, you're looking for anybody in there, okay? Just a brief look. What you're also doing is this. You're scanning the area for other threats, okay? Is there somebody in the trees here? Is there somebody here, okay? Could there be somebody possibly coming from the corner over here? Okay, obviously don't, don't try to go in front of the vehicle. Okay, you could potentially get ran over, but just peek on over. Okay, anybody over there? No? Okay, so you're making your approach, clearing the A pillar area. Nobody there, up, down. Okay, make sure that there's nobody hiding there with a gun. Um, the B pillar area. Okay, let's clear that area here. Okay, nothing. And then C, okay, check in the C, and there's a back. So this is a minivan. We're gonna have to check in the back. Let's see if we see anybody back there. No, okay, we're good. Now, if we're gonna do another check, just to be certain, before we approach again, I wanna see what is beyond the current threat, okay? Anything in the bushes again? No, on this side, no. Right here, no. But you know, we haven't even looked at this corner yet. And now we have an opportunity to do so. So I'll glance real quick at the car, okay? And then real quick, right here, okay, we're good. Okay, and I can do, do a double check. Okay, all right. So this vehicle is cleared. There's a license plate right here that we can give to the dispatcher. Um, you can use the military alphabet or you can use the other alphabet. I don't know what the al other alphabet is called, but here we can give the dispatch. 
we can give a police dispatcher a plate. Maybe they can run it. Maybe it, it's belongs to a stolen vehicle. Eight Robert Zebra John two zero four or I think military um, phonomics mnemonics would be eight Robert Zulu. I think is John two zero four. I'm I'm probably off. You want to check the vehicle's hood, okay? And see if it's, is it warm to the touch or not. If it's warm to the touch, that should draw some concern, okay? There's could there could possibly be somebody around. Maybe they're committing a burglary, robbery, some other horrible crime, and this is their getaway car, okay? Um, from the outside, okay, you can look. Okay, this is all plain view area. Like, what's what's there? Okay, well, I mean, I have my tactical kit right there. I have a tourniquet here. Baskin Robbins ice cream. <laughs> that, that's my stuff. A jacket. Okay, any ski mask? No. Well, actually, if there if there's if there if there is no ski mask, they could possibly have it on too. I mean, that's another thing. Okay, so make sure that. The vehicle is either warm in touch or not. Um, remember, on body camera, if you have a body camera with some of these license plates, if you you shine them, um, the reflection might distort the numbers. Okay, so you might not actually have the numbers. If you do have a body camera, then just say the numbers out loud, maybe to yourself. Um, do not get a when you're approaching the vehicle. Um, and you haven't determined whether there's people there or not, do not get a notepad out and start writing down license plate numbers. Don't do that. Make sure the scene is safe first. Okay. Okay, next we're going to discuss body positioning. And what you normally want to do is stand slightly to a 45 degree angle from any of the occupants of the vehicle. Now, the first thing you obviously want to do is have them roll down the windows, all the windows, okay? Especially if you're in Arizona, it's legal to have tint on, on all the windows. Now, in California, um, you can only have tint on, well, basically on any window except except the, um, the sides right here. The side window, you, you cannot um, tint the, the windshield. But not everybody follows the law, okay? So you might come across a California vehicle where the window, um, the windows are tinted. Have them roll down both windows so you can see who's inside of the vehicle. As for identifying yourself as private security, it's up to you. In the past, me working private security or I working private security, I have not identified myself as private security. And most of the time, sometimes I do, but most of the time I don't. It's obvious who I am. I'll have the badge, the name tag, shoulder patches. And many times I'll have a, a golf cart or a security vehicle. They, they, knew, they know who I am. I mean, any reasonable person would know who I am. Now, there might be some circumstances where you feel the need to identify yourself. It's up to you, okay? As long as, well, if something goes south, as long as you're able to justify your actions, if you're able to explain that this person should have known that you're private security, then you should be fine. So, for body positioning, okay, well, Actually, this, this is a front approach, um, and I'm talking to these people right here. If I have other people here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay right here, okay? And the reason for that is if I go over here, okay, there's somebody in the back, then I can get shot. This person can kill me. This right here provides a better angle, and I'm going to angle myself, 45 degree angle. I'm going to pay attention. To where his hands are at. I'm gonna have him put his hands on the steering wheel, hands up, hands on the dashboard. Okay, I, I wanna make sure they're visible. We know why, what people can do when their hands, when one hand is not visible. Okay, so right here, just use your just contact. And you're gonna have a bend at the knee, okay? And the reason for that, okay, is so that you're balanced. Okay, if they open the door, you don't wanna be, you know, knocked totally out, off balance. Okay, that's why. So, just take, kind of take like a semi sliding stance, 45 degree angle. Obviously, you do this, you're gonna get people a little bit nervous sometimes. Sometimes nervous is good, but um, I like to have a little bit bend right here. 
Okay, so right here, you wear body armor, you should make sure that that body armor faces the person. So I contact this person, um, this is through the, this is through a front approach, okay? This person's clear, so there's nobody in the back. Um, if there's nobody in the back at all, then this is actually a good position right here. Now remember, when I'm contacting this person, I'm getting information, I'm looking at my surroundings, okay? Back, front, up, all over the place, down the street. Maybe they call their friends. When people make those phone calls, I get, I get a little bit worried because I think that they might be calling for their own backup, their own friends, their homies, whatever people, whatever gangsters call each other. They're most likely maybe calling for them. So if this, if it, remember, there's nobody in the back here and I have this whole area um, as my workspace and I have somebody here, then I'll be about right here. Okay, see how I'm kind of angled? If they open the door, okay, not gonna push me to the side, okay? Unfortunately, if there's friends in the cars, okay, there's a chance that you might get pushed backwards, but if you're keeping that, keeping that balance right here, okay? So about right here. You wanna stay slightly, um, maybe a little bit behind the, the pillar that's right here, okay? Just in case they open that door. If they want to take you out, okay, they're going to have to turn a lot more. Don't be doing your stuff right here, you guys. This is where you're going to die. This is where you're going to get killed. You're doing all your work right here. Okay, the open door will knock you off balance. Don't do that, you guys. Okay? If they, if, they, if they want to kill you, make them work for it. Okay? Right here. Right here. If I have a flashlight, I'll have it right here. Okay? If I have a sidearm, I'll keep my hand around right here just in case I need it. Okay? Don't be screwing around with your tasers. Have your taser out just in case. No, this is a potential lethal threat. We can always de-escalate. We should always de-escalate. But we want to have our lethal force option available, okay? So flashlights are on right here. This is how you contact the person. If you need to get some information, their name, um, who they are, maybe their, maybe their date of birth or some type of ID, um, then you can put the flashlight right here, okay? Just like this, keep it on. Now, if you, if you have enough light inside, which you probably don't, maybe you could always shut it off, but I like to keep it on. Keep it on here, and then you can write your stuff here. Now, in private security, my recommendation to you guys is, uh, if I'm by myself, I, I don't care about getting their names and their ID, I would probably just tell them, hey, look, you guys, this is private property, and I'm kindly asking you to leave. Okay? And that's that. If they don't leave, then you could, uh, my suggestion to you is contact the police. If you work in an area where police won't show up and it's and they the, your security company wants you to do everything, um, then tell them, hey, look, uh, right, right now at this point in time, I'm not asking you to leave. I'm telling you to leave. If you don't leave then I'm gonna arrest you for trespassing, okay? And remember, when you say I'm gonna arrest you, you need to be a man or woman of your word and you're gonna do what you say, okay? Because they might hold you up to it, especially these gang members. You say I'm gonna arrest you if you don't leave for trespassing, you better do it, okay? So don't, just don't, just don't bluff. Somebody might call it, okay? And when I mean you, you're gonna go hands-on and arrest this person, I mean hands-on and arrest this person, so most circumstances I probably won't even <clears throat> I won't even mention that I'm gonna do that unless I'm really gonna do that okay if you don't have backup you guys it, it can get very dangerous okay so let's talk about next um, the driver's side approach okay so a driver's side approach and if I didn't say this before you guys we're gonna assume that you do not have a security vehicle golf cart nothing Th this is a foot patrol that you're working on this technique, we're gonna discuss the driver's side approach. Okay. First thing that you're gonna do, well, let me position this, you guys. And I apologize in advance, but sometimes it's really difficult to show these tactical videos without the cameraman. 
camera person. But okay, so you're over here. First thing that you're gonna do, especially with these minivans, is check in the back. Okay, is there anybody there? Do not stand here in the back. Okay. They run you over and you end up having to fire a weapon if you have a gun. You're gonna have to explain why you just couldn't get it out of the way. Okay, I, I think you'll still be justified, but you're gonna have tons of explaining to do. Okay, so illuminate this area. Okay, and I'm gonna move the camera again here. Okay, and check the pillars, okay? I'm checking the eighth pillar here. Nothing. Okay, don't get don't get too close. Deep pillar, nothing. And then you have the driver right here. Okay. So this area right here is going to be your workspace, okay, right over here. You're going to be right in back of the, the C-pillar, okay, and getting all the information from this guy. Remember, you're going to stay at a slight, bend your knees slightly, okay, make sure that you're balanced and position your body armor or yourself about 40, take about a 45 degree angle from this person, so, so this is perfect, okay, so right here. You open the door on you, they can't knock you over. Okay. Don't be doing another, don't be doing don't be doing none of this crap. Okay? From right here. Doing all your investigation from right here. Okay, they're gonna knock you over with this. Okay, from right here. Don't lean into the car. Okay. I'm gonna say this again. Don't lean into the car. My friend was killed when he was dragged. Not even kidding, guys. This is the sad, he, he was dragged to his death. Do not lean into cars, okay? So all your workspace again is about right here, okay? So here. If you have to go hands-on, you might have to drop the flashlight. Um, my, my recommendation is to just tell this person to leave, okay? It's not worth it. Not worth your life to do a little bit more investigative work. If you have a partner, you can be a little bit more risky. If you have law enforcement on the way, that's, that's the better plan. Summarize everything. Most of the time, you don't want to approach a suspicious vehicle, just call the police. If you, have, if you work for a security company that wants you to approach, well, the approach that I showed you is a, is a safer way how to do it if you didn't have any training at all. I highly recommend that you consult with other people that have, that are trainers in this field, um, police officers, especially field training officers. If you see one, um, they are good people to, um, good people to get a hold of for some good information. Um, the guys that work Oh, military, military great, special operations people also great. And it's good to get different perspectives of different people. Different private security professionals have different experiences and you wanna definitely learn from that. Remember, we named all our pillars. We have the A pillar, um, where's the A pillar? Right here. Okay, A pillar here. B pillar is right here. C pillar here. If we have one guy it, I'm sorry, we have a bunch of people in the car. Um, my contact zone is about right here. If this nimwit right here, this scumbag wants to shoot it out, okay, he might accidentally hit his friend right here, which would be good for you because you don't have to deal with this guy any, anymore, not so much, but this is your area right here, okay? Um, if there's no other passengers in the vehicle, then you can just go around and do everything from around right here in, in this area. Remember, just bend your knees, stay balanced. Same thing on this side. If you have a, if you have a bunch of friends, bad guys over here, um, 
I mean, it's hard for you to contact the driver. Um, if you if you could do it safely, you know, kind of position your body, walk backwards a little bit, um, and make this real contact zone right here. Okay, and also when you do your contact with suspicious vehicle, suspicious cars or people out there, you're gonna have to look for other threats. Okay, what's in back of you? What's over there? What's hiding behind the dumpsters? You know, what also, what, what lurks in the corners over here? Hope you find this video helpful. Once again, please share this video with anybody that works at night, works in an area where there's a lot of suspicious vehicles or that some, maybe somebody has an, has an opportunity to contact a suspicious vehicle in the future, this video, the content of this video might save their life. You guys take care, be safe. If you have any comments, concerns, I'm always ready to hear them. You guys be safe.